Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I am your already delighted host, Kevin, uh, because I am delighted to have finally made the acquaintance of um, someone who goes by many names, but in her coaching business, and today goes by Amy Hernandez. Um, I'll just tell you, she's an absolute delight. I'm finding myself so at ease talking to her. I have a feeling that you'll get the same the same vibe. It's going to be another challenge for me to keep this short and sweet like we usually do, but let me invite you to get to know Amy a little bit better. Amy's specialty is international business, helping companies and individuals navigate the different cultural and administrative challenges of working abroad. This includes strategies for marketing, productivity, and motivation across different countries and cultures, and aligning business strategies with cultural training programs. Um, Amy, it's it's been I was I was going to try to make a, a, a tongue in cheek pun about you getting lost last time when we were supposed to record. <laughs> like it's been a long road to the podcast, but it has. It's it's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to get a chance to talk to you today. Thank you for finding the time and being here today. Well, it's great to be here and it yeah. is great speaking with you as well. Good. Excellent. Let's let's go back to the beginning. Not the beginning beginning because that's we don't have mm-hmm. that kind of time, but the beginning of your your life as a coach, your superhero origin story as it were, like how you got your coaching powers. I like to sort of jokingly refer to it. How did you okay. whether it was like a key moment where someone said the right thing at the right time or you just realized like, oh, this is it. This is what I this is the word for what I want to do. How did you how did you come to that realization? Well, honestly, I kind of fell into it. Um, I've always taught, so I've always been a teacher. I was in business for many, many years, but um about I want to say 15, 20 years ago, I started teaching Hmm. and I got my MBA in international business and I was teaching mostly executives like business English, business culture classes, things like that. And I found myself giving more and more advice on how they could move into different countries. Hmm. Um, So I started with a lot of um, executives in China actually have worked for some very, very big executives, like VPs of very large major international banks that I have worked with and got some great things done with them. But I guess from there, I started focusing a little bit more on doing the actual coaching. And (laughs) then I accumulated a number of other degrees, which kind of expanded my um, reach to clients. So I mostly deal with international business, also do a lot with project management. And since I have a pretty strong IT background, I work with a lot of IT people in figuring out how they can actually motivate the non-IT people on their team or how they can get their IT people to develop that emotional intelligence that everyone is so Mm. um, looking for these days. Mm -hmm. IT people (laughs) don't traditionally have to deal with everyone. (laughs) Oh, too true. As a, as a former and still sometimes amateur IT person, <laughs> I worked at that development. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I love coaching. I love teaching and I travel a lot. I have worked in many different countries. I have experienced culture shock and re-entry culture shock when you go back and things like that. So I feel uniquely qualified to give some advice on people for the type of things that you should look for when you're hiring Mm. foreigners, when you're moving into a new country. Um, Mm. I did accounting so I can help with the tax structure and the administrative things, but mostly it's um, really getting to know the new culture and Mm. working with it instead of against it. Yeah, you really are like a, a a multifaceted connector. Like just the the, the different yes. the different bridges that you can build from different points on different sides of a of a chasm or a divide, where it's like the cultural, I, even like the like the tax structures. Because that's like that's the kind of thing that it's super duper easy to never give a single thought to when you're about to move into a new country or to a new region. And you're like you right. kind of know that things will be different, but like tax codes might be completely not what you're expecting or prepared for. And just having someone who can like. Just they just know that, and so they're like, "Hey, have you thought about this yet? Well, you should look at this, this, and that because this is how it's going to go when you move when you right. start your business over there." It's like, "Oh, oh!" It opens up a whole world of well, anxiety, but then also the solution is immediately there because you're like, "No, I can guide you here. I, I can help yeah. you make this connection." <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's more difficult because I think we all 
have the tendency to look at things through our own, you know, cultural lens, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So everyone, when you go to another country, you look at it through your own country's lens. Mm -hmm. um, luckily for me, I've worked with so many different countries now. I'm not sure I really have a cultural lens anymore because um, <laughs> I just know that when I speak with my uh, clients that are in China, I speak with them differently than I do my clients in Spain or in Germany or here in Mexico. It's very, very different depending on who I'm talking to. And labor laws, labor um, management styles, how people work, they're just so completely different in different countries. So it's really true. It's, it's interesting to work with different um, different countries and different people like that. I'm just like, yeah, my, my brain is kind of spinning now, just thinking about all the different, cause I mean, I think about it, like when I encounter something that like, it's a, it's a, not a problem requiring a solution, but like an obstacle or a hurdle or just some sort of new thing that requires like some navigation, just like, you know, how, how to speak to someone from a different culture in a different way, or like, you know, whether mm -hmm. I'm supported to them or they're supported to me and just kind of like taking that extra beat or sometimes way more than a beat to just think about how, what I'm putting out there, what how I'm communicating myself, the work I'm putting out there, how that's landing, not just how I'm shaping it, but how it's landing and making sure that I'm at yep. least thinking about that. And also asking like, did this, how did this come across to you and like working to build those bridges? And it's so, it's such, it's such a, an under illuminated aspect of the completely global world that we live in at this point where it's like we're just True. we're so interconnected and we really do need guides to help us navigate some of those treacherous bridges <laughs> and that's where i come in because there yeah. are so many accidental faux pas that people make culturally without even thinking about it um for example in many asian countries they will say yes to you no matter what even if they have absolutely no intention of doing it mm -hmm. they'll say yes because culturally um, it's not acceptable to say no. And the mm -hmm. thing is, is you have to ask those probing questions to find out if they're really, if they really mean yes, or if they just don't want to offend you. Mm -hmm. it's, so, that's something we've, we've encountered yeah. a lot. Just uh, one of our, um, one of my favorite coworkers um, is, is in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And it, it took a while for us to realize she would like say yes to everything and she would find a way to get stuff done. But then we could see when she was overwhelmed because some things would just like start the quality of her work would start to like wobble just a little bit, just a little bit. And mm -hmm. we got to a point where we learned and also talked to her about this, just like, and she, she says like culturally, it's a little bit different when we're asked to do something and it's just a yes or no, we will say yes, because we yes. can do it. We will find a way to get it done. And then it's like, well, okay, that's that's introduces a whole other facet of management. And it's like, how do right. I manage your complete and utter commitment to doing the job and saying yes to everything with making sure that we don't put you in a position where you've got too much on your plate, that we don't put you in a position to fail. That's as like something about like, I think about that a lot. It's like, what, what positions am I putting people in based on their personality, their family, their background, their culture, their location, all of the above? It's just it's it feels i was gonna say at first when i when i lay it out like that i can remember a version of me that would find that overwhelming mm -hmm. the version of me now that is still growing is someone who is like oh that's really i get to th i get to think about all of this on how i get to connect with people and interact with people and how i get to serve them and how we get to work together to do things it's like it's more of an opportunity than a crisis <laughs> if mm -hmm. that makes sense but still that is a that is a an ever-growing uh, demeanor and development in me. And I think in a lot of people. True, true. And, um, you know, I do also speak many different languages, which has helped me because um, there's always that those false friends where people will try to communicate in a, in a language that maybe they're fairly fluent in, but they make that mistake and they just use a word that is completely incorrect, means something <laughs> completely different and can change the tone of a conversation. So uh, I like to help with those little things. Make sure to do this and not that because there are some words um, that are perfectly acceptable in one language that are not in another when you're mm -hmm. doing uh, work. For example, in the US, <laughs> We say things are crazy all the time and no one thinks mm -hmm. anything of it. Oh, wow, what? that's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, how are you going to do that? If you say that here in Mexico, it's really bad. It's really? like really offensive. Huh. Yes. And little things like that. 
So if you call someone crazy here, you're literally calling them mentally ill and they take it very mm. seriously. Um, and on the other hand, here they call things ugly all the time and it's just a normal thing. It just means, you know, it's not so good. Mm -hmm. Little little things like that where even the translation, you know, it's not a big deal in one country, but it really is a big deal in another. Mm -hmm. And those small issues can get people into big trouble. That's fascinating. I had no idea about the about the crazy because that's something that's something I've tried to I've been working on excising from my vocabulary um, mm -hmm. just for the mental health considerations and how it gets thrown around really casually. And it's like I've I've I've, I've gotten the invitation quite a bit as I've like mm -hmm. grown into middle age to reconsider the words that I have just taken for granted as words that are just thrown around and used and how they might land. And just even just thinking in 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 United States culture about the use of the word crazy and the mental health, pro, you know, implications right. of that and trying to like just find other words like maybe wild. That's wild. Right. It means about the same thing in like, you know, basically American slang, but doesn't have the same connotations towards mental health. Correct. But that's like, see, that's that's extra fuel for the fire for me to keep working on that change because it still that still slips into my into my conversations here and there. But realizing that it's actually even more not dangerous, but even more of a loaded word in, in a culture so close to me is that's that's yeah. that's 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 got files away in like the, the front of the file where it's like, okay, start work on this better because you don't know how you're gonna like how you're gonna affect somebody with such a casual throwing out of a word. And that's basically where I focus my um, coaching on is I teach people how to deal with the new culture that they're going to get into. Uh, some people decide to work abroad. They're going to open a factory in another country or they're hmm. going to maybe spend six or six months to a year in another country working, um, opening a new factory, something like that. And I help them navigate those little cultural things that don't seem to be a big deal to a lot of people, but they really make it a lot easier to to work and to understand the culture. Mm, I love it. Clearing the path. I imagine I'm, th I'm thinking of like a a, a a forest path that's not very well worn and there are rocks and stones and twigs and like loose uh, gravel or something like all these little pitfalls that you can trip over that you don't really know are there but if you're experienced and you're like a hiker you don't know what you're doing you know the lay of the land so to speak you can exactly. watch your step and it's just like it's it's really is that simple but it's also like there's tons of stuff you can trip on that's why you need a guide <laughs> true exactly um and it's been so much fun i have learned about so many different cultures in my coaching so hmm. It's really amazing for me. I've found new places to go visit, learned about new cultures, and that also helps me when other people want to go into another country. Um, so little things like that are really helpful. I love there's learning one, new things. <laughs> an, there's an analogy that's been floating around in my head since you since you used the word uh, the phrase cultural lens. I want to see if I share it with you and see if this vibes because you're a yeah, I'm, I'm a glasses wearer. And immediately yeah. when you when you start talking about uh, different lenses and how you almost feel like you don't have one anymore because you've become so familiar with so many different cultures, I immediately got this image of the uh, whatever that device is called that when you go to the optometrist and they're basically testing your vision to figure out what your mm -hmm. prescription is going to be. And they're basically one or three, two right. or three. And they're just they're trying different lenses and different lens combinations. And then eventually they figure out which one locks in where everything gets sharp and clear. And then that's your prescription for the vision that you want to have, whether it's you know, exactly. near side or far side or whatever. It's, it's like, it feels like exactly what you do. <laughs> that is exactly it. That's a really good analogy. Um, I didn't think about that before, but that's a really good analogy. <laughs> you just have to show them awesome. what will work for this culture. You know, some cultures you can be more, I don't know, top down. Other cultures, you really have to get the input of your employees. Mm. And you have to know where you're going with that. There are cultures where unions are still very, very powerful and others like the US where they're not quite what they used to be. On the rise, on the rise. Yeah. <laughs> Coming back, but, but those kind of things are really important when you're moving to another country or when you're going to do work in another country, because we don't necessarily think about them. Hmm. Um, because when you're going from one country to another, maybe you'll think about the food they eat. Maybe you'll think about how the money is, but you won't really think about 
you know, why do they do it like that? Mm-hmm. Why, why is this how they do it? What are the laws that, that govern this? And sometimes it's very surprising. Frequently, it reminds me of one of the, one of the core elements of, of coaching that I've, that I've kind of, I've having so many data points now and talking to so many coaches who focus on different, different elements of life and business and, and development. Um, that there is, it's not really about providing the information required or like loading you up on necessary like information or trivia. It's about having the right questions to ask. The questions you don't even know to ask. Those, and yeah. it's like, have you asked this question? It's like, oh, I didn't even realize that was a question. I didn't even know that that could be a question. And yet that question is, un- it unlocks so many things that you really do need to know if you want to be successful into whatever area of life you're moving into, whether it's a new culture, a new industry, a new country, a different time zone, a different continent, whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really that that providing of important questions that you might not even know to ask, let alone understand what the answers might be. That's such a... You can't can't put I, in, in my in my head and in my heart. You really it's it's impossible to overvalue someone who can provide you with those questions. <laughs> well, hopefully, um, that's <laughs> that's what I base my business on. Um, the idea, <laughs> yeah, that is the idea, and it's really helpful. Even if people aren't planning on moving, let's say you just have a branch in I don't know Italy or a branch in Germany that you have to work with. Coaching can really help you to understand how they work, why they do the things they do, or, you know, why maybe they take a longer lunch or a shorter lunch or why they're more willing to work overtime or less willing to work overtime, depending on the country. Hmm. Okay. Let's, I'm just doing the thing where I'm looking up at the zoom clock and I'm like, I'm loving, I'm loving the the conceptual stuff. This is like, this is, this is really good stuff, but I want to make sure we talk at least a little bit about like the nuts and bolts of your, of your business, your coaching practice today. And it's like, it's kind of sum it up with the who and the how, like the, who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being, if you have any particular focus or if it's really anybody who fits a certain kind of need or criteria and the how is really, I mean, is, are you primarily one-to-one? Do you do like lots of group coaching or do you have any masterminds you host, a book that you have that is sort of like can get people on the right track and all of the above? <laughs> well, I do both one-on-one and group classes um, depending mm-hmm. on, I work for some companies where I do group classes uh, for specific departments or something. Mostly one-on-one, um, who Honestly, I coach mostly executives, but I've done middle management, even people who are just starting in management, um, because simply for the fact that those are usually the ones who deal with the international policies. So mm. um, it tends to be I have more executives, but I also have quite a bit of project managers who are either working on agile project management for the first time or trying to figure out exactly how to work in their agile project management. And um, I do do a lot with that as well. Hmm. Nice. There's, there's, it it, it makes total sense because there, those are not quite transitional roles, but I often find myself thinking about people who work their way up in a company, whether they've gotten to the middle or high middle or the, the top of their respective ladders and how there's that moment or different moments, I believe, throughout the journey up that ladder, up that hill, where you go from being really, 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 really good at the thing that you do. So good, in fact, you've gotten promoted, but you get promoted all like a step away from that thing that you got excellent at into right. a role that has some leadership responsibilities and some some team management responsibilities that require either an adjusted skill set or a skill set you haven't acquired yet. (laughs) And that's a, that's a really easy place for talented, caring, passionate individuals to flounder just because they're not, they don't have the tools they need. They got, they get basically, we're so good. They got promoted into being just okay. (laughs) Exactly. And that's what happens. Um, And it's my job to help those people excel in that role. I love it. Oh, that's it's such a good place to stop. Except I don't want to, <laughs> because. I, but I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna be respectful of your time, and I'm also totally gonna want to have you back on at some point because I feel like Definitely. I would I would love to unpack all diff- all sorts of different aspects of this. I would love in my head now. I have like the the 57 questions you didn't know to ask but should. <laughs> Definitely, I would love to be back again. Um, oh, that'd be lovely. Before I let you go, um, where is another little two-part question? Where can people find out more about you, your work, what you do, how you do it, just learn more? 
And if it's different, where can people best connect with you if they wanted to start a conversation or a relationship? Actually, um, Amy Hernandez coaching services.com is my website. Mm. Um, they can book a session. They can learn about what I do on that website. Um, or they can always find me on LinkedIn, um, to start a conversation. So I am definitely there. Uh, nice. Anne-Marie Elizabeth Mendoza Hernandez. It also lists Amy Hernandez there and, hmm. um, they can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Excellent. I'll make sure the links to both of those are in the show notes so that people are just to click away. They don't have to remember, they don't have to remember a URL. <laughs> All right. Excellent. That would be great. Oh. And I would be happy to speak with anyone who needs help in those areas. <laughs> Excellent. Well, shoot. Thank you for sharing some time with me today. It's, it's, it's a, I, I gotta say, it's an absolute pleasure to get to know you. It's like, I feel, I want to like pick your brain slash just, I, you have all the questions. <laughs> I was well, like, this has been a lot of fun. So I would love to has. do it again sometime. We will. We absolutely will. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for the audience for listening. I hope you, I mean, if, if you got just like a little sliver, a little taste of the value that Amy has to offer, you know exactly what to do next. Connect with her, talk with her. Pick her brain, hire her. <laughs> she she knows the questions you haven't thought to ask yet, which is such a great hook because it's like, what questions haven't I thought to ask yet? <laughs> so do the right thing. Find out more about Amy and we'll talk to you again here on the podcast very, very soon. All right. Thank you. Bye.